In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, breaking down the final week and a half here of January and diving into February as well. Real quickly, let's talk about my consulting company, Prestige Weather. If you're looking for more than the generic hourly or daily forecast that can be so frustrating and very broad, look no further than Prestige Weather. We help out individuals and businesses alike. If you're an individual looking for better, more accurate and direct weather information, be sure to subscribe to our standard package. That's only $4.99 a month. We have just unveiled brand new graphics to help deliver extremely informative and efficient forecasts for your business, breaking down the snowfall forecast, timing forecast, and risk level for your specific location. Our clients have saved time and money using our services to make critical decisions. Gone are the headaches of tirelessly hunting down information across the internet. Prestige Weather is here to help you and your business. Be sure to email us at prestigeweather at gmail.com or use the Calendly link in the pinned comment down below to book a meeting with me immediately. We offer consulting calls, texts, and emails catered to your exact location of need. We will be on standby during your job or event and give you updates from start to finish. We also offer long range, medium range, and short range forecasts. We can help with rainfall and snowfall forecasts plus the timing of onset and ending, which is so important. We pride ourselves on being highly flexible and we're always willing to deliver on your specific needs. Put a meteorologist in your pocket so you no longer have to guess what the weather will do. All right, now let's break everything down. We did have a minor snowstorm happening yesterday in to this morning across a lot of the Ohio Valley and into the Mid-Atlantic. In the Mid-Atlantic, I'm hearing word that it has overperformed for a lot of folks, so be sure to let us know in the comments how you've done as far as snowfall amounts in those areas. I've heard areas in Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware all have done phenomenal with it. Uh, so for all of you guys who have been waiting and waiting for snowfall, I'm definitely happy for all of you. As we move towards tomorrow on Saturday the 20th, we see even deeper cold air diving into the Midwest and into the Northeast here. Tomorrow is going to be a very, very cold day. And we're actually going to see things get more mild after it. Keep in mind that we have a lot of precipitation kind of just driving its way onshore to the West here as our Pacific jet stream that moves all the way across it is very, very strong. This results in two things, very warm temperatures across the United States and also a lot of storms moving on shore to the west. And we have both of those happening here in the near term. So let's watch this play out. And as you can see, those storms just continue to hammer uh, the west. But what we end up seeing is a lot of them are moving on shore here like this. But we see that this northern jet stream is not dipping anymore. Everything's moving very, very quickly from west to east. It's called a zonal flow, a zonal pattern here overall. And what this does is instead of having these large dips and ridges across the United States, since it's moving so quickly, it's moving very line linearly across the United States. And this results in overall warmer temperatures. Also, the Pacific air that's coming on shore here is making its way well uh, across the United States. This is resulting in overall warmer temperatures from the 21st on uh, onward, I mean, basically. So as we take a look at this, this does not mean no snowfall for the United States. As you can see, there's still some opportunities for the Great Lakes into the Northeast, areas that really, really average low temperatures. You know, they can survive, obviously everybody can survive, but they can definitely live with uh, 5 degrees to 10 degrees above normal and still see relatively wintry conditions. It's the areas that have average temperatures that are above freezing that really, really don't benefit from this whatsoever. Uh, they end up seeing temperatures that are way above freezing and ultimately cannot result in snowfall, therefore. These areas include the Mid-Atlantic, kind of the southern Ohio Valley here into the southeast, of course, some of the plains, the south central states. All of these areas, you know, they're going to be relatively warm and they need below normal temperatures to even hope to see snowfall. And we're certainly not seeing that from the 21st through at least the 28th. We see continued storminess. Uh, we do actually begin to see some troughs moving in after the 25th here. We'll talk about that. But really, this is resulting in a jet stream that causes everything to move up from the Gulf and into the eastern states. And this is why we're seeing so much precipitation in the eastern states here. But also what comes with it is that humidity and the warmth from the Gulf of Mexico. And really it's the West that is cashing in on this kind of Arctic air moving in from Canada. Certainly very, very impactful overall. 
And we continue to see this until about the 28th when we do get some colder air moving in. It's very, very marginal, however, uh, but this is gonna be relatively near normal temperatures or maybe slightly below normal temperatures. We can see these Gulf storms still moving up the United States and this results in some potential snowfall in these areas. Now, we usually take a look at the GFS. We're actually gonna take a look at the Canadian model here as a bonus. I haven't shown this model on the main channel here in very, very long. We're gonna be diving into it because it has a little bit of a differing opinions. Uh, why would I show two models that show the same thing? There's no real point. I'd rather show two that have differing opinions so that we're more aware of all potential outcomes here. I hope that makes sense, though. obviously, to me it does. Uh, as we move through the long range, we get that same kind of Great Lakes Northeast snowstorm. Despite the warmth, we get the same surging Gulf energy there you can see taking place between the 25th and 26th. And then we begin to get some very interesting storms here around the 28th, 29th. Again, when I anticipate that pattern change, a 996 low pressure system here offshore of the east. And we do get some wintry precipitation for the Ohio Valley, portions of the Mid-Atlantic, and of course the Northeast. As of now, this model is not indicating a very pure snow event. Matter of fact, it's a very messy one with rain mixing in for multiple areas, sleet and ice for a lot of areas as well. Definitely would be a very messy scenario for the 28th through 30th time frame. But as we reach those low temperatures between the 28th and 29th here, that's going to be a Sunday into Monday time frame, we can see that this becomes a lot more snowy for some areas. So this certainly could be an interesting winter storm if that was to take place. Again, a little bit of a differing opinion here for you guys. Let's take a look at that total precipitation. And of course, with that strong jet stream moving onshore, we get a ton of precipitation up and down the western states here. Also, with that gulf surge in this moisture, we're also getting well above average amounts of precipitation for the east as well. The areas that see the least here is going to be the Rockies up through the northern plains where we really don't see too much precipitation whatsoever. Total snowfall, we see a near normal to slightly above normal amount for the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas, but we actually get a below normal amount here for the Rockies overall. As a lot of those storms don't make their way too far inland. They really stop at the more coastal areas. So these mountain ranges, again, such as the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas, do cash in on a lot of that snowfall. Many of the storms moving in through the next 10 days don't make it to the Rockies there, so that's why there's a differing uh, outlook there. For the Great Lakes and Northeast, we see a near normal amount of snowfall, maybe slightly below normal, but still not snowless. And certainly in the warmer pattern we're seeing, uh, that's the most we could ever hope for. So definitely some good news, for, you know, despite the overall bad pattern for cold and snow, we are seeing quite a bit of snow. Uh, definitely the Canadian model is pretty on par for the West with what that European model is showing. The only difference here is we actually see a lot more here for the Great Lakes, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Surely for the Great Lakes and a lot of the Northeast, this would be near normal to above normal snowfall, uh, due to that snowstorm that we see move in around the 28th, 29th timeframe. Definitely could be an interesting setup. I have my eyes on it personally, and I'm going to be tracking all of these upcoming situations. We've talked about the 28th being potentially a benchmark for that end of this pattern. I certainly think February 1st stands out as a date where we're seeing big changes as well. So let's go ahead and break down the temperature pattern. Here's the 20th through the 25th, and we hold on to a lot of this cold uh, that we're seeing over the next couple of days. We will see a warm up after the 21st, though. So here's the 23rd through the 28th, and you can already see things warming. Uh, and then definitely the 25th through the 30th, it's the same story. Again, that Pacific jet moving across the entire nation leads really towards coast to coast warmth. I mean, we're seeing it on all corners of the nation. As we move to the first through the fifth year, however, we see this warmer pattern really continue here out west as a bit of a positive PNA type pattern. And we get below normal temperatures along the eastern seaboard. This combined with that Gulf energy moving up the coast has my full attention and it should have yours as well. We're going to be watching this extremely closely. Uh, definitely my biggest concern, just to give a counter argument as to a, a scenario where we could see warmer temperatures prevail into the beginning portion of February, would be if this kind of ridge out west expands too much and it's too strong, it could begin to trickle into the east and actually continue to bring us coast to coast warmth if that Pacific. Pacific jet continues to be stronger. Uh, we do expect that to weaken a little bit here, but definitely if that trend's stronger, that could uh, really spell warm and less snow. 
Uh, as we reach the 10th and beyond, we see more cold being predicted here by these long range models for the deeper south, southeast, mid Atlantic, and northeast, especially with warmer temperatures across the northwest into the north central states. So, again, above normal temperatures in these areas, below normal temperatures for the kind of southwest, south central, and eastern states. As we continue on after that point, we see the cold continuing to be shown here on this model and actually gets progressively more intense as we reach the final days there of February into the beginning of March. We trend at even further cold in the east, this time around looking very intense. So we have some model indications that the later portion of February is going to be even riper for cold and snow than the beginning portion is. And really, uh, you know, it's not the most promising pattern that we've ever seen. I would say that definitely... The beginning of January had a lot more promise than the beginning of February appears to have. However, I will say that, you know, it doesn't look bad by any means, especially after February 1st, and it only gets better as the month progresses. So there's a lot to feel excited about here as we approach the month of February. And as a little sneak peek here, let's expand into the first week of March here. And we see this cold looks to continue here. This is a very long range projection upwards of 40, 45 days. So be sure to take this with a grain of salt, but current estimates are showing cooler than normal conditions with continued precipitation, which if all of that lines up correctly should spell snowfall in the Eastern half of the nation. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for daily weather videos just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.